Alright, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to make an animated music video. Today I'm going to be going over things like importing your video and music files. I'm going to show you how to synchronize your video to your music. I'm going to show you how to put it all together with some basic transitions. I'm going to show you some effects like overlays, cropping your video, and doing some inverting effects. And then finally I'm going to be touching on a little bit of post-production stuff like color correction and exporting your video. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into this. First thing you want to do, obviously, choose a song. Once you find your song, all you do is drag and drop the file into Premiere like this. Now the first thing I like to do when I get my song into Premiere is select right here. You're going to notice your cursor changes and drag that little line down. This is going to expand our wavelength. This is going to help us place our markers and notice where everything's going on in the music. So yeah, once you do that, get your cinematic, get your TV show, whatever you want to use drag and drop that just like we did with the audio file right into Premiere. So once you have it like that, you're going to notice that this still has its audio files. We don't want the video's audio file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click it, come up here, click unlink. Now these are two separate things. Delete the audio file like that. Before we start dragging the video file over the audio, over your music, you're going to want to start synchronizing things. And the way you start your synchronization process is by putting markers down. So anytime you want to put a marker down, you press M. So easy, put a marker on there with M. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to mark every time that there's a base. Every time there's a base, we're going to make a basic transition. So when we have a marker on our base, it's going to be a lot easier for us in the future when we're actually bringing our video in and chopping everything up. So I'm going to go ahead and every time there's a bass in this song, like you'll see here, see that? I'm going to do that every time that there's a bass. So next time there's a bass is right here. Put a marker down. See that? Bass right there. Put a marker down. And this is why we expanded the waveforms. It's a lot easier to see where a bass is going to be when you have the waveforms all expanded like this instead of having it compressed like that, like it usually is, right? You can see that right here, it jumps up, we know that there's going to be bass. So I'm going to cut ahead um, and I'm going to put some markers down and I'll get back to you guys in a second. Okay, so I'm done marking up my music. Let's just take a look at that really quickly. So you see that? Every time that there's a bass, there's a marker. It's going to make it a lot easier for us in the synchronization process. So now we can actually start taking this video clip and messing with it and making it look good to the music. So the first thing I noticed with the music is that there's this buildup right here. See that? So we know that at this buildup, we're probably going to want a slower section of our scene. Slow part of the scene, slow part of the music, it makes sense. And then once we get to here, once the bass drops, you could say, that's where I want the action to start happening, right? So I'm going to drag this over here, and I already know where the action started. I put a marker on this just to save time. I know that the action starts right about there when they start jumping, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here, and just for now, where this blue line is, right? I press Control-K, split the clip. Now I'm going to take the clip right here, and I'm just going to drag it up and I'm going to press this eye icon. All this is doing is toggling the track's visibility. That's going to make it so this track is basically invisible, so we can just work with this right now. So control K to split, take this, and I'm going to come over here, and because I put a marker down on my video file, I know that I want the action to start right there, right? So I'm going to make this marker line up with where the drop is. And we can tell that happens because a black line shows up, showing that the two markers are connecting. So let's just see how that looks. So they start jumping right when the bass drops. That's exactly what I want. So now that we have that set up, we're going to do some basic transitions. So what I'm going to do is that right on this marker, 
the marker on our video track where the bass is, I'm going to press Control K on the video track to split the clip just like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go a few frames forward by pressing the right arrow key. I'm just going to press that a few times to get it to a position that I like and I'm going to cut it at that position and that might sound confusing but I'll show you what I mean and I'll show you what it looks like. It's really really simple and it's a really clean looking effect. So I'm going to go forward a little bit maybe to right like that when they're in the air and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the video clip Control K to cut it. Now we have this scene right here selected. I'm just going to press delete. Get that out of the way. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to drag this right here and just connect it like that. Now what we're going to get is that we're going to get a little skip right when the bass is and it's a really clean looking effect. So let's take a look at that. Now I think maybe I went a little bit too far so I'm going to press Control Z to undo and maybe... We don't need it to jump that far, so maybe like just like that. I'll go about halfway as far, press that, control K, delete, bring it back. It's a lot of trial and error to make sure that you get the look that you want. And yeah, so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to my next frames now, and I'm going to do the same thing. Control K, or not my next frames, excuse me, my next marker on the base. Control K, where that marker is, right? Because we already marked up the base. Do the same thing. A few frames forward. Control K, delete, drag this back. Now we get these cuts on our base. And I'll show you how that plays into our other effect that I'll be showing you in a second. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to do this to the rest of the areas that I marked up on this clip. And I'll be back with you guys in a second. Okay, so I'm done chopping everything up. Let's take a look at uh, how it looks really quick. Alright, so nothing special, but it's clean. And that's all we need to do to start. So now let's start putting the real effects on and making these transitions look better. So the first effect I'm going to be showing you is a basic screen shake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to wherever there's a base. We're going to be starting with my first base right here. I'm going to select the clip, and I'm going to go one, two, three, four frames over. Press the right arrow key four times, then Control K to split that. Then I'm going to come over to Effects, and I'm going to search Transform. It's going to be under Distort. I'm going to put Transform. Oop, didn't work. And I'm going to put Transform on it like that. All right. So now that transforms on it, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my scroller, come to the first frame of this four frame area that we just uh, selected for ourselves, and I'm going to change the scale underneath motion to 110, just like that. Now what I'm going to come down and do is uncheck this box, use Composition's shutter angle, and I'm going to change the shutter angle. 100. What this is going to do is that's going to simulate motion blur, which I'll show you how that looks in a second. But that's very important. Do not forget to do that or your uh, effect will not look good at all. So now we're going to start keyframing this. Now to keyframe in Premiere Pro, what you do is that you click on these stopwatch icons to toggle it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the stopwatch icon for position. You're going to notice that I made a little keyframe right there. It's really hard to see because it's right in the corner. But I'm going to change a position. Let's change this, let's push that to the right like so. Then let's put that up like that, just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go one frame over by pressing the right arrow key one time, and I'm gonna change it to another position. And what I'm doing is I'm just basically putting it in random spots so that the screen's gonna start shaking because the way keyframes work is that it's telling the software to transition from whatever it's doing on this keyframe to this keyframe that amount of time which might seem kind of confusing but I'll show you how that works in a second so same thing I'm gonna come one frame over again maybe let's push it that way I just noticed that this is probably a little bit too far down because we can see the black let's come back to this one we'll keep that how it is we'll move that up like so, so it's kind of moving around come here one more time we'll move this to the right now like that, we'll move this back down. 
All right, let me show you how that looks. Publish. Simple screen shake, really easy. So we're gonna do that same exact thing to our next clips, but then I'll show you a little secret on how we can skip a couple steps. So same thing, come to our next base, which is conveniently marked with a marker for us. One, two, three, four frames forward. Now the reason I'm going four frames forward in this case is just because I can kind of see that my base lasts for about four frames. We can see that this little jump in the waveform is about four frames long. That doesn't mean all of your screen shakes have to be four frames. Just in my situation, it looks like that's about how long the base is and I want the screen shake to last for the duration of the base. So same thing, take our transform, put it right there, scale 110, come down here, uncheck that box, shutter angle 100. Now to skip a few steps, but I'm gonna come back and do, come to our first screen shake, copy and paste those keyframes like that. Make sure this is selected, control V, and boom, we just pasted those keyframes right back in. So we don't have to worry about keyframing it every time. See that? So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna do that to all of my uh, bases and I'll get back to you guys in a second. Okay, so I'm done putting the shake effect on everything. Let's take a look at how that looks. All right, so it looks good. So next thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna do some work with adjustment layers. Now adjustment layers are really important because they're gonna end up saving you a lot of time in the future. So to make an adjustment layer, you come down to your project panel, you click this little paper icon, it's kind of what it looks like, click new adjustment layer, just click okay. Now I'm gonna take this adjustment layer and I'm gonna drag it above my scene. Remember this scene right here, the one that has the eye icon uh, toggled off is just some stuff I don't want to work with. I'll just put that over here so it doesn't get confusing. Now this adjustment layer, what I'm going to do, so I'm going to drag it over everything that I want. Um, so you're going to drag it over your entire clip, right? Just like that. Now this, I'm going to also drag this away. Obviously I'm not marking up the entire clip. That would take way too long for the tutorial. That would waste a lot of time. But basically, I'm dragging the adjustment layer to the end of my clip. Now, how adjustment layers work is that whatever effect you apply to the adjustment layer um, gets applied to anything that's underneath the adjustment layer. Now, to start, what we're going to do is that we're going to go to our effects panel, look up crop, and then drag crop onto our adjustment layer. Now, what crop does is that it basically asks you to input what percent of the screen you want to crop. So, top. You're going to notice everything's at 0% right now, obviously. Top, let's just type in 10. Now 10% of the screen is cropped at the top. Now at the bottom, same thing, we can put in 10%. There we go, now we have a little crop. Now you can change these values to whatever you want. If you want a really dramatic crop, put in 20 for all of them. Some people like to do that. I think between 10 and 15 is a usually safe place to go. Gives it a cinematic look without just cropping away all of your action. Now that we have that effect applied underneath or applied onto our adjustment layer, which is then applied underneath. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of color correction. And we're going to also add that to the adjustment layer. So again, adjustment layer selected. Now what I'm going to do is go into luminetry color. So over here. Now luminetry color is interesting because there's a lot, a lot of stuff you can do with it. Right now I'm not going to go into everything because that would make this video an hour longer. But what you do have to know is that under these looks are really fast, kind of lazy ways to give your video a um, certain look. So you can choose from all these presets. You're gonna notice it changes the way the video looks. And yeah, you can go around and kind of mess with those. What I'm gonna show you for now is how to do basic um, correction with curves. So we're gonna click curve. And now what I'm gonna do is that on this curve right here, I'm gonna select right here, click on that, drag that up. And then I'm gonna come down here, click on that, drag that down. What I'm doing is I'm playing with our um, color a little bit. It's gonna add some contrast to our video. So let's take a look at what it looks like with and without that. See, adds contrast to it, makes it look nicer. So after this, next effect I'm gonna show you is invert. This is a pretty cool effect. 
gives a little flair to your video. I decided I think a cool place for the invert effect would be over here where there's the three bases in a row. So let me just show you what it is right now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the invert effect to these two areas that are in between our screen shakes. So what I'm going to do, come up, effects, type invert. It's going to be underneath channel and I'm going to drag invert to both of those areas that don't have the screen shake. Now let's just see how that looks. Next thing I'm going to be showing you how to do is flashing strobes. So there's some clicking right here. Hear that? So I'm going to go select our clip, two frames forward, one, two, control K, delete that, go two frames forward, control K, two frames forward, control K, delete that, two frames forward, control K. What I'm doing is I'm deleting every other two frames and we're going to get this little flashing strobe effect. So let's see how that looks. But yeah, besides that, let's just go ahead and I'll show you how to export this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the beginning of the video. Now we don't have an intro because, you know, this is a tutorial. I don't want to waste your guys' time, but pretend that there was something here before this build up. We'll pretend the video starts right here. I'm going to press I right at the start of our sequence that we want to export. And I'm going to come to the end of the sequence that we want to export. And I'm going to press O. Now everything that's selected inside of this kind of gray area is now going to be exported. If you don't do that, it's just going to select everything and export everything. Obviously, I don't want to do that because we have this stuff out here which isn't being used. Come up here, file, export, media. Now the basics that you have to know, make sure your format is this format right here. If you're putting it on YouTube, you want it to be H.264, always. Preset doesn't matter because we're going to end up changing it. You can keep everything like so up, up there. We're going to come down. Obviously, we want 1920 by 1080p or 1920 by 1080. That's a basic 1080p video. If you're going to 4K, you're going to want to change this, but most people will keep it like that. We're going to come down here. Check the box that says render at maximum depth. It's going to make your video look better. Larger file size, but it's going to make your video look better. Profile. Uncheck this box. We want our profile to be high. That's going to give you the best quality there. We're going to come down, and for our bitrate settings, we're going to change it from VBR1 pass to VBR2 pass. We're going to set the target bitrate to 30, and the maximum bitrate to 50. Now we're going to come down here, make sure everything's like that. Make sure your this box right here is selected for use maximum render quality. You're done. Click export. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. Um, other than that, have a good day and peace out.